Hey everybody, this is Balance from WCReplays.com, bringing you my very first audio commentary for the site. Uh, it's copyrighted and all that good stuff, so don't pretend it's yours, because it's not. It's mine. Or ours. Right. So, uh, let's go ahead and get this started. Uh, this is a game between SK Sweet and MYM Moon. If you don't know who those players are, um, you probably can't be my friend. So... This game's on Twisted Meadows. Go ahead and open it up. Get it paused at the 15 second mark. We're going to be taking a look at this replay from Moon's perspective with the Fog of War on, I guess. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put it on at one time speed. So go ahead and get it paused at 15 seconds while I uh, talk at you for a bit. So, um, again, we're going to be covering this from Moon's perspective, so the Nine Elf perspective. Um, everybody knows you don't want to get into a late game bad situation with, uh, you know, Undead having their tri-hero combination, high hero levels, lots of hero sniping capability, it's an ugly situation, nobody wants that to happen. With that in mind, you have to be making decisions as a Night Elf player right from the start of the game about how you're going to prevent that from happening. I say that now because those decisions are going to be coming into play right from the start, you know, how are you going to avoid getting in that situation where they're faster than you and they, they just put out a ton of damage? Uh, you, can, you can keep that from happening, it's just a question of how. You know, you it. Do you want to go for some sort of early game push uh, and try to end the game early so it doesn't even get to that point? Do you want to choose a hero selection and army selection that'll help you set up an expansion early on? Look at you the resource advantage to combat that situation. There are a lot of different ways to approach it. So we're just going to see what Moon does here and talk about why he makes the decisions he does. So we're at 15 seconds. Moon's perspective. Fog of War on. One time speed. Unpausing in three, two, one, and go. So, right from the start, we can see that uh, Moon has put five, all five of his wisps on gold, and he's going to be starting with a, uh, a tavern build. So, um, you'll see the hero that he picks momentarily, uh, I know, as I've obviously watched this replay. Um, but, that already is a choice. The Demon Hunter uh, is still a popular and valid hero in this uh, matchup and on this map, as is the Warden. Um, so what is a Tavern hero, probably you know a Beastmaster or a Dark Ranger, um, going to do for you that a Demon Hunter or a Warden doesn't? So obviously the, the, na the natural Night Elf heroes, Warden and Demon Hunter, have uh, lower hit points, um, agility heroes, right? Um, and they're not uh, they're not as good at creeping, you know. They're not as good at leveling up quickly as the Dark Ranger and the Beastmaster are. They're also not necessarily as good at handing at handling ghoul rushes, or at least not as immediately good. You know, they don't produce those extra units that make the fight a little easier for you. Um, so they're they're a slightly different choice. Um, and so what Moon is doing with this tavern build is he's he's more likely than not he's saying I'm going to have a lot of units early game, um, and I'm going to be able to creep quickly, expand quickly, or attack you early, because um, that's what early game power does for you. Uh, you know, Beastmaster and Dark Ranger both are not particularly great late game heroes. Um, I mean, the Dark Ranger's level six is obviously pretty good, uh, but you know, a level five Demon Hunter is probably better than both of those heroes. Um, so he's saying that I'm going to outcreep you and have a hero level advantage, or I'm going to expand, or I'm going to have such a big army that I can hit you and win. It's just one way to play the match. Uh, and I think it's a pretty popular way on this particular map, because the undead late game is sort of exacerbated by Twisted Meadows. Uh, they have the corner expansions on this map, which is which caters very well I to gargoyles. Uh, they're crept easily. Um, it's just not hard for Undead to put up a corner expansion. They're hard to scout. They're even harder to kill. Um, and it can turn into a very ugly situation if, they, if they, they get that kind of control on you. So Moon has chosen to, uh, to establish some kind of an early game advantage uh, that will allow him to combat that. So as you can see, he has chosen the Beastmaster. Uh, Beastmaster and Dark Ranger are both, you know, good choices. I feel they're they both provide, you know, lots of units. Um, the Beastmaster is probably a little better late game. The Dark Ranger is probably a little better early game. Um, but it just depends. The Beastmaster is more immediately good against gargoyles. They, you know, they they both have their pluses and minuses. So. You can looking at uh, Moon's base. You can see that he hasn't started his tech yet. That he's uh, he's already massing, you know, a lot of archers. He already has four archers before he's even started his tier two tech, and he's putting up that third Moonwell um, before he starts his tier two tech. 
uh, now a fourth moon well. So wh why all the fuss? Um, well, you can see Moon has a Scout Wisp over in the Undead base, and always a very good thing to do, by the way, because you want to know if a Ghoul Rush is coming your way. Um, if you're not, you have a lot of freedom to do, to do whatever you want. If it is, then that's you know, something completely different. So, so why is Moon doing this right now? Um, well, it's because he expects some kind of a Ghoul Rush, he, and he wants to be able to have an early game advantage. Um, it goes along with choosing a Tavern Hero. You, you know, you, you want to be able to fight off whatever... Um, they throw at you early game um, and get your resource advantage or get your push or whatever it is that you're going for. Um, so in this case, uh, you know, he's chosen to, to make a bunch of archers. He's kept them in his base because he expected Sweet's Death Knight to show up, which it just did. Um, and so he can chase the Death Knight away. Uh, and he just did a little bit of creeping with the Beastmaster. Just get a, um, he crept not at his immediate green because Sweet's Death Knight in all probability went there first. Um, and there's... If you're just a solo Beastmaster creeping with a solo Death Knight right next to you, you're not going to be getting those unit kills. So he went somewhere else, and he kept his archers in his base. So as you can see, um, that has provided him with you know half of level 1, uh, which, of course, uh, Sweet probably has too, via ghoul creeping. But now uh, that little choice of moons has evened out the game, and it's all about leveling that Beastmaster if you're going to be um, going for this particular tactic. So that was a... Uh, a good choice by by Moon, um, and he knew to do it because he saw the ghouls coming his way, um, and so he he knew how to handle that particular problem. And so again, um, he's just doing a little bit of creeping um, and using his Beastmaster not so much to kill things because he's not really going to be able to. Uh, uh, hurt that creeping, um, but he is going to be able to at least know what Sweet's doing and put a little bit of pressure on him uh, while uh, he does a little bit of creeping of his own. Um, it's just a good example of splitting your army to a good purpose, which is something that you see a lot at the high level of Warcraft. Um, so he knows exactly where Sweet is, he knows what he's doing, he knows that he just got level 2, and meanwhile he's almost level 2 himself um, via creeping with his regular army. So he has another Scout Wisp, like lots of Wisps, as you're seeing a theme here. Scouting is very important because you have to be able to anticipate what kind of pressure the undead's going to put on you. So he knows that a bunch of ghouls are going to be coming his way. And he's already made a bunch of archers to combat this. He's not going to lose to a ghoul rush here, which can happen in this matchup. You have to be very careful about that. You have to... You don't necessarily have to stop a ghoul rush this way, but you have to know how you're going to stop it if it comes your way. Um, so he knows where Sweet is because of that scouting. He knows... Um, Sweet didn't come to his base, so that means he's probably at that orange, which of course he was, so now he's going to come out to play the uh, the archer hit and run. Um, this is a little easier when the undead doesn't have an unholy aura yet, um, but as it is, it's a very interesting sort of, well, I, I guess I shouldn't call it interesting because a lot of people think it's lame when they're watching it in observer mode, um, but it's very important. You know, things can go really bad here. You have to be very careful with your, uh, your hero not to let it get surrounded because losing a TP hurts. Um, or, you know, letting it die, which would probably hurt even more. Um, so you have to be careful with what you do, and meanwhile, you have to make sure that the undead doesn't get in good position on you, because when it's... I mean, in, it's, in, in any melee versus range situation, you as the range player need to keep your distance away from the melee. The, me the melee um, player obviously wants to have their units amongst yours, and you want to have your units as far away from theirs as possible. Um, and so you try to maintain that while, you know, hitting them as much as you... Uh, doing as much damage as you can. Um, I mean, that's just the, the fundamentals behind what's going on here, but you, you want to you wanna try to execute this well. It's actually a very important part of the game, and you don't want to be losing archers here if you don't have to. Um, Moon's making no effort to try to chase Sweet around. He's just trying to... Uh, sort of wait, um, and, you know, see, see if Sweet makes a mistake, you know, see, see if he can establish any kind of an advantage at this point. Um, but he's not, you know, he's not trying to, you know, chase him around the map and uh, uh, actually kill all those ghouls right now. He's content to do a hit and run because he knows that his strength is going to be at tier 2 when the Dryads come out. As soon as those Dryads come out, all of a sudden Sweet's Ghoul Rush gets very pointless very fast. Um, so there's really no reason uh, 